from mankind's destructive actions. With the help of Madison's father, Mark, Monarch sets out to stop him, but not before he awakens Mothra, Rodan, and worst of all, the ultimate alpha, King Ghidorah, who challenges Godzilla for supremacy of planet Earth. In many ways, Godzilla King of the Monsters feels like a deliberate course correction in response to the criticisms of its predecessor. While the 2014 film relished in taking its time, this film hops from one epic set piece to another at breakneck speed. The kaiju are clearly the focus here, and while this will no doubt satisfy those who felt that the last film skimped out on the monster mayhem, it does come at the expense of a truly great story worthy of being invested in. Thankfully, everything involving the monsters is top notch, and the joy comes from seeing these classic characters being given the kind of big budget treatment many fans have longed to see. It must be stressed how well realized the creatures of King of the Monsters really are. Modern computer effects are used to bring Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and Ghidorah to life in ways they never have been before, imbuing them with nuanced behaviors and quirks that subtly develop their characters without anthropomorphizing them too much. All four Monstars are designed wonderfully and given their moments to shine, updated to fit within the tone and style of this series of films while still remaining remarkably faithful to the originals. And while the mythology and alliances are shifted somewhat, it's nothing Toho themselves haven't done before, and in this case are actually quite inspired, making these creatures feel fresh despite how old they actually are. The only downside is that much of the time the monsters are shrouded in darkness and weather effects, which works for dramatic and narrative purposes, but still, there are times when you wish things would clear up so you can get a better look at them. In genre tradition, King of the Monsters has a rather large cast of characters, each of whom contribute their small part to the ensemble. And while no one is necessarily bad, many aren't given much to do and get lost in the shuffle. This is kind of a shame because many are played by great character actors, and part of the fun is seeing these big names act out in a legit Godzilla movie plot. Ken Watanabe's Dr. Serizawa is a welcomed return, the human representation and reminder of the franchise's beating heart. Thomas Middleditch, Bradley Whitford, and Zi Zhang round out the cast, among many others, but the film is mostly focused on the Russell family, played by Vera Farmiga, Kyle Chandler, and Millie Bobby Brown respectively, and to whom your mileage may vary. Like the 2014 film, their family drama is the least compelling aspect of the film, and feels kind of forced amidst all the more pressing global-scale drama going on around them. This won't bring him back to us. Chances are, though, you'll be too enthralled by the spectacle to be too bothered by the more cliched aspects of the story. King of the Monsters certainly isn't lacking in action, as rarely a scene goes by without a monster appearing on screen, and there are many a moments that are likely to give fans goosebumps. Michael Doherty's direction is fast and ferocious, and his screenplay plays it straight with a knowing wink to the audience, peppering in many homages and callbacks, some of which are thrown in with the subtlety of a hammer. Perhaps the best thing about the film, though, is the soundtrack by composer Bear McCreary. His original score is great in and of itself, but it's his reuse of the classic Godzilla and Mothra themes that are the icing on the cake, and are enough to make any fan squeal with joy. Ultimately, Godzilla King of the Monsters is a really fun, high-octane thrill ride that doesn't have too much to offer beyond that, and that's just fine. While it plays around with religious and environmental themes, it's very surface level, only serving to contextualize the monster action and little more. But for those who love monsters, especially these particular characters, that will be more than enough. All four of the main stars are treated like the cinematic titans they are, each of them given moments of striking visual beauty that stick with you and may well become iconic down the line. It does risk alienating those who aren't quite as enthusiastic about the kaiju genre, but it could be argued that this film wasn't made for them. This is a big budget Hollywood Godzilla film, made for fans by fans, and while there is a sense that it could be better, taken for what it is, it's a worthy sequel to the 2014 film, and more than a worthy entry into this historically long-running franchise. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.